Hello everyone. We're just going to jump straight into it today. We're back to making art. Uh, let me give Cryptic a shout out because he's a really cool space friend and he's always here. And more people need to know. There we go. Let's see which one we get this time. So, uh... Ooh, Beat Saber one. Pink and Day or Green Park? Because I want to do another one of those. But, uh... <laughs> By the way, uh, you guys should go check out uh, Cryptic's Discord as well. It has a lot of great clips from Beat Saber. Gonna find some really great squat videos in there. For those of you who are into that kind of thing. But I welcome in Cryptic. I hope you're having a wonderful day. I hope you have a good lurk or whatever it is you're up to. Hey, Reko, what's up? It's going a okay today. Let me give you a shout out too. Another great space friend everyone should check out is Reko Gecko. A lot of these characters uh, ended up being redone Ooh. The, the the next series so when that ends up happening they uh you know but these were the originals like this is the original designs and so like if that's you crazy the ninja turtle renditions most of the times they repeat characters they change them up a little bit but yeah the goal is to eventually wow those are amazing uh let me see, Cryptic. My brother was ready to hit me after I told him I messed up with the titles like that. <laughs> yeah, uh, that'll happen sometimes. I didn't know that someone clipped that. My true nerd. So is Ninja Turtles like your thing, the thing you're really into and really passionate about? Uh, if so, what do you think about the trailer for the new Ninja Turtles movie? I'd be really interested to hear that. Personally, I like the design choice and I like the fact that they've actually made them like young teenagers and not necessarily in the same time frame as the uh, the other Ninja Turtle series where they're like older teenagers, where they're a little more mature. The style for the new one is unique and they are mad young. Yeah, they are. They're super like just coming into puberty kind of young. Into the Spider-Verse is definitely influenced. Yes, that. And uh, the Puss in Boots sequel was also highly inspired by that. You can see it. So I imagine it's going to become a whole genre. I believe I heard it somewhere over on YouTube where someone says it's probably going to be one of those things where we look back and go, man, you remember the, the uh, early 2020s when all the movies looked like the Spider-Verse? Uh, yeah, TMNT kind of influenced my drawing stuff. You know what? I can see that in the uh, the face of your characters sometimes. Now that you mention it, I never thought about it before. But yeah, it looks... Um, I love your art style. And your characters are fantastic. I think you're a great master at character design. Animal people. Yeah. Well, it's true. Like a big part of character design is making unique silhouettes and memorable uh, character uh, assets. And I think you've got that down pat. Like, I can see your characters in my head even after just seeing them once. And they're just that memorable, so. I really be um, proud of that. I hope you are. Uh, but yeah, we're back into uh, doing the Reaper piece. I think I'm going to turn the music down a little more. Oh, thank you. Are you drawing a nun creeping up from behind the tombstones on the child? No, it's... So you can't really tell right now, but the veils and stuff are going to be a translucent shadow color. She's more like a skeleton ghost representation of death. Uh, but right now you just can't tell because that'll come in in the coloring later on. 
So maybe kind of like a nun. <laughs> If the nun's a ghost skeleton. So an undead creeping up from behind the tombstone on a child. Yeah, a vaguely undead representation of the concept of death. Uh, speaking to this child symbol of ham, I guess you can say. And uh, ham's just showing her her really neat magic paper airplane. So I remember we were working on the hands. We were having some problems getting the angles down, so I had a a new sketch layer to kind of help guide us into the proper proportions. Of course, no one heard me when I was saying that last time because I muted myself. Nice. What's the inspiration for this piece? Well, let me, um... Let me make this visible. And we can talk about it. Okay, so... This whole series is based on, uh, yeah, bloody, <laughs> like your, uh, your eyes in that emote. Um, but it's a representation of Ham's inner mind and life. And when she was a child, her family worked, uh, in a family business selling headstones. So she grew up around cemeteries and death a lot. And it was a really prominent part of her upbringing. So this is just her representation of never truly being afraid of death. Uh, just because it was something she was always around. And more... I guess more of a communal relationship with the thought of death itself. Where, yeah, it's a thing that happens to everyone. And sometimes it's unfortunate. Sometimes it's just right. But it's not really something scary. So it's just like a casual conversation with death and uh, in the mind of view of a child. So that's kind of where the concept of this piece is. So we'll turn that back down and let's get a new layer for the arms and try to hammer this out. Make sure I'm still at the right length. Yep, okay. Right brush and everything. I did some work on some other things this weekend and I was not visible to anyone. I wasn't hanging out in my usual spots. It made me feel guilty for missing a lot of my friends' streams. But, uh... I was getting a lot of stuff done for the channel. Did a whole bunch of new animations and stuff for the followers and for the future things that can happen once we reach associate. So I was, I was dead. After all the coding, too, that had to happen, I was out of it. Gotta figure out how I want that perspective to be viewed. Maybe from this side. I need to change this back to... my loose eraser. Much better. I need to take a minute and think about the perspective of this hand because it's on the top of this stone, so the palm will be flat, but the fingers are curling around the edge. What is your favorite animal since coming to visit Earth? Uh, still gotta be the tree pangolin. Let me see if I can find a picture. A lot of people don't know what pangolins look like. But basically, they're... If you're... Uh, from America, they're kind of like an armadillo. I'm familiar? Yes, you know. You do know. Tree pangolins are just 
the best. There's a lot of different species of pangolins, but I preferred... My preferred one is a tree pangolin, if I'm gonna be talking about favorites. Something you're gonna find out about me is I absolutely adore things with long noses and pronounced noses is one of my one of my many weaknesses. I just love a critter that's got a good snoot on it. Anteaters? Yep, love anteaters. Seahorses? Love seahorses. I do. If it's got a long snoot, it's in my it's in my wheelhouse of adoration. This is a tree pangolin. They're just so freaking amazing. Look at that snoot. Elephants? Yes. They're so cute. Look at those claws. They're so amazing. And that tail. So great. Just everything about it. They're critically endangered, by the way, which is horribly sad. They're used a lot in medicine. Uh, and for things, they walk with little hunches. Yes, they're all uh, very wobbly when they walk. They're just the best. But unfortunately, they're critically endangered. And they need help being protected. Uh, they're being hunted for food and medicine. And unfortunately, their defense technique is to curl up into a ball, which unfortunately makes them very easy to pick up and carry off. So they need help with uh, human intervention protecting them from the other humans. Because they're such a magnificent creature, it'd be sad to see them no longer exist in the wild. I think I'm going to make a, a new layer for the hands. And let me sketch out some stuff. Pangolin awareness, yes. Probably something like this. And then the thumb would be here. About. The amount of prep I have to do for a hand is insane. I cannot draw hands very well. Someday I'll be good at it. Apparently February 18th is World Pangolin Day? I need to start planning for next year. focus on this hand for a little bit. Yeah, I think it'll be something like that. I'll have to do some adjusting on it. Got to take out the garbage? Okay. I'll see you in a bit. Okay, I think that's good for the hand there. Let's go ahead and merge it down and then we'll work on the background hand. Eh, 
think that I'll kind of be behind her bodice here for this arm. Okay, and then I'm going to get this again. Hear about the wrist. Um and then this the thumb would be on the inside, so be seeing her like pinky and maybe a little bit of this one. I think I need to change the what this hand's doing instead of just sitting there kind of weird. Maybe have it to where she's holding up a part of her skirt or something between her fingers. I think that would be better than just hanging there all limp and I did that on the wrong layer. Okay, wrist, bottom part of the palm, upper part of the palm, um, pinky, middle, maybe more like that angle. Eraser a bit. And then we'll have kind of the skirt like that. I'm gonna get rid of my guidelines here. Merge things down now. Now I'm gonna kind of put in the indicators of where her legs are. And kind of where the skirt joins the rest of it. Same over here. I mean, I realized I need to change her eyes. She's not kind of looking in any one direction in particular. I need her looking down at the child. So here about. It's 
since she's looking down. We'll have them kind of half lidded because you'll be seeing the top part of her eyelid. And there she's got more, more intent and in where she's looking instead of just staring into the dead of space. I need to look up some skeleton reference. Let me... Boop. We're gonna hide that for a sec while I pull up a, a skeleton. a reference on the canvas so it's nice and ready and available for us so here we go skeleton reference i'm not going to go that detailed obviously but i do kind of need to get the general idea of what's happening under here And really it's just the way I draw it, the way it is down to the clavicle, which is the, um, the breastbone here on either side of the shoulder. So again, we're not going to see very much of her neck. Have that top part of the breastplate. It is right underneath the clavicle. I don't think so. But I definitely need to bring these up. Let me remove this bit. I accidentally grabbed here. I think here we'll start to fade. Okay, let's work on a new part. We'll work on the stone next. Make sure this line is straight. And I just realized part of the perspective on the stone is wrong. If this side here is facing toward us, it needs to be a little taller. than this part over here.
Okay, kind of like this. thing down so it's in the right position for the hand. And I think I need to redo this swoop. Let's go ahead and select this. Clear it out. Hey Jexoy, welcome in. Hold on. Let me give you a shout out. I hope you've been having a lovely day and all that good stuff. Let's see if we get a nice clip. Hey, oh, hey. Thanks to Tim and the viewers for joining and participating in this stream. I really, really appreciate it. And all of you are wonderful people and creatures and a whole lot of other things. It really means a lot to me and all of, uh, uh, I can't really think much right now at the moment, but it really means a lot to me and to the okay, people around me that you all are here and interacting and doing all these wonderful things and enjoying yourselves. So big thank you again to all of you and good night. You really do have a voice perfect for 1940s radio. <laughs> uh, mostly because I had fun experimenting on it. It was really like both both things you made for it, I think, were really neat. Because didn't you do um, uh, the serial parody? I need to do more stuff like that. Yes. Yes, you do. We love seeing it. We love consuming it with our eyes. Get the music. And I need to turn off this randomly flim flam. There's a song I want to listen to specifically. Right in this moment, so I'm just going to skip to that. Oh, you're working on line art now for the cemetery? Yes. We're figuring out the perspective for the stone right now. But we got the skeleton mamo mapped out. Thank you for the lurk. Uh, so sleepy? Well, get some rest. And thank you for stopping by. I'm going to go uh, check out that message you sent me here after the uh, the stream. But thank you so much. Save. Okay. That basically saves it. Procreate's really easy. <laughs> Let me... Um... Yes. I knew it. I knew Jexoy was going to be on it. And that's good. Because I am thirsty. gonna make sure to not mute myself for the entire stream this time. Let's do a stretch. Ugh, that was a good stretch. I keep forgetting the care option. Yeah, I think it's just habit, but uh, luckily whenever we get to affiliate, I'll have Little doobly doos that make it easier for people. Special little doobly doos for the audience. Soon! Yeah, maybe. We'll see. Hopefully. I need to move my camera down so it, it's not so bad when I dip. Okay, I'm gonna do this curve on a different layer. 
Let's get in the main arc. And then the reverse swoops. I want to listen to that again. I wasn't paying attention. Quadrilateral? Where did it get that from that? I mean, it kind of works. <laughs> okay. Yes, I think that looks about right. Let's go ahead and get the pedestal in. I'll merge these down together. I don't really need to focus on this end because it's going to be covered. Let's work on the interior piece. And I will just get a quadrilateral up in here. Get it about the size and length I want it. Flip. And line. And then I'm going to do the centerpiece, which is rose. One of my favorite memes on the internet is, um, Art related it says how do you draw a rose and it says uh first draw a cabbage and then color it red and they're like great but how do i draw a cabbage and they're like it's real easy just draw a rose and then color it green comedy gold about there and now I'm gonna do the scaling it's not gonna be that big a difference it's gonna be enough about there Okay, and let's do the child.
I think I made the head too wide. Let me think about it. We're gonna be saying a lot less of our face, I think. It needs to be pointed more up. So it's like she's having a conversation instead of right now she's looking at the airplane. But she should probably be looking up if she's talking to talking to this lady. more like this. We're gonna have to change the hair. Do this guideline on a different layer. Okay, so her chin should be here about. This is kind of the area we should be working in. to look at that at all. I'm gonna get rid of it. We'll come back to it. More like that, but scaled appropriately. Let me do it on a new layer. So that I can scale it appropriately and be lazy about it. That nose a little too big. So probably more like that, where we're barely seeing the nose at all. And this hair needs to be 
teleporter. Out there. Need to bring the head down a bit. Because now with it being tilted up. I put it a little higher than it should be. Get the dress in. Baggy sleeves. As usual, we'll come back to those hands later because I really need to think about them hard. This one won't be as rigid, so it's going to be at a little bit slant, even though technically this part's getting closer to us. Since the dress is baggy, it does come down. All the way down to the ground there. And I realized in the other sketch, I gave her like two elbows and I just realized that, so obviously this is our elbow. We just need to bring the hand here and then the handles just have to be here. And that skirt, I've made it quite long if her legs are going to be up. I need to make it shorter. Here about should be fine. And it would be more about here actually. And not as high, so we're actually not going to be seeing the knee. Then we'll come in and do the foot separately because that's also something I need to think hard about. And we'll have shorts on. Because Ham never wears a dress without pants under it or a really long pair of shorts. here. We'll shrink us those. And let's get in some planning for these. Okay, so this is the first part of the palm. This is the second part of the palm. This is that finger. Thumb is on the opposite end. 
I think maybe we'll only have just one other finger viewable there. And that'll be it for the palm on that side. And I really need to think about the angle on this one. So we'll have the thumb pad here, I think. Since the palm is facing toward us. And then her fingers would be kind of coming from the back end here. Then we'll do a little curve on that last joint. We need to make sure they're in the right length. like that. I'm going to come back and rework it here in a little bit. I don't want to get stuck on it, so I'm going to move over to the leg. That's kind of going to be at this angle. And I need to already change that angle. and get start a new layer okay so we've got the ball of the foot here and actually see, this would be the ankle this would be the ball And we would be seeing part of the side, but not very much of it. So the foot going forward. And then the end of the shoe. So it'd probably be more like this. But not on a walk, like I've done it. For this hand, I need to dip these fingers lower, I think. Because we're going to be looking more at the palm. And the airplane will be like here. So we'll start with this and we'll go from there. That's it for that hand. Nice and easy. And we've got a little bit of the tougher one. I hope uh, taking out the trash wasn't too much of a task. I'm not sure what it's like where you're from or where you're at right now, I mean. Because it 
could be complicated depending on where you live. Pam used to live out way out in the country and uh, they would have to haul the trash to a election site themselves. So uh, that was a quite a bit of chunk of time. Family interfered with my return. They usually do, but what a wonderful interference to have. Maybe something like this. And yeah, that still looks wonk. But I think it's because right now, as I have it, I can't really see that the. it's the angle. Whoop. Because if I probably squished it down more like this, you'd probably get the sense that the palm was more in the foreground than the, the fingers. Yeah, that would be better. So let's cut this away. Clear it from the original. And then let's turn off this. Probably going to do some writing. Well, uh, good luck with that. Um, I hope it goes very nice and smooth. I enjoy a bit of writing my seal. And after this, I'm gonna go check out our space friend SBG's um, piece that she wrote about international language that won, won a contest on the Discord she wrote it on. So I'm super excited about that. I get to read some award-winning content later. You know what it is? I need to also make the palm more distinct from the arm. Probably by broadening this whole thing. Let me clear this. I need to bring that one way down. Then again, I need to not start with the thumb. That's my problem. I need to start with the palm. It would be more curved like this. And then the thumb pad and the thumb. And then the fingers. Yeah, now it's looking right. May take a couple times, but I'll get there. And those fingers are just a little, little long for the angle that they're supposed to be sitting at. A little shorter. Okay, I think that'd be more accurate. And then we need to get a little bit of for shortening here for the first set of knuckles. 
and then the curve and the return. You got this. Well, thank you. Hands are my my art stick, like the the problem that I have the most with. I thought about doing a stream where I just draw things that are notoriously hard to draw. Maybe I'll do that for some kind of reward or something later on in an event or something because I just need to get the practice in. But things like hats, cowboy hats in particular, <laughs> um, hands, feet, uh, vehicles of any assortment, mech suits, bionicles, as I have. I have a space friend on Twitter that's a bionicle lizard girl. And she was one of my first 11 followers, and I still don't think I drew her in the fashion deserving of her model. Gonna go ahead and start on the foot. Just need to make that foot bigger. Too small for the the size of the body. Oh, that's on the original. all these down and we'll come and race away this part right here it's just overlapping a little too much and then I need to also put in the rest of the piece that's going to be showing and since it's at the angle it's at it's not going to look like that lips very long there I think a little longer. That looks too short. And I just realized I put the pedestal at a different perspective. We need to come in here real quick. Drink it down over here. There we go. Okay, let's get the uh flowers down. I'm working on most prominent features first before we get into the background. So now we need the bouquet. are probably going to be in a different perspective. Okay, we'll just get the opening here. The cone shape here. The other cylinder opening here. They're probably going to look like this. Thank you. 
Let's see the bow. Should it be the kind with the bow? I'm gonna look up different kinds of funerary uh bouquets. Google's gonna think that I'm going to a funeral now. Those are the ones that go on coffins. We specifically want the ones that go on graves. Thank you very much. Most of the ones I'm seeing are... Not the kind I had. They're the kind that go in the, the vases. Or the vases. What, what have you. I just want to sit laying on a grave. Not facing me flower first, which is the hard part. Because all of them just show the flowers and they're too poofy to see the stem set up. But of course, that's what's more aesthetically appealing to photograph. I think maybe we'll do away with the paper look and just go stems with a bow. I think we're just going to do stems with bow without the paper. Get a nice broad ribbon. Then I'm going to... The bow's usually on top, so... Hereabouts. And I think at the angle it'd be at, the first ribbon's gonna kind of look like this. Second ribbon here. Third ribbon here. I'm saying ribbons, but they're not really, not really the ribbon. Like multiple ribbons, they're usually just one piece, but I think you get the point. Hey, let me come here and erase. Erase I can see this better. I need to erase away this last one. It's just wrong. So many ways. Okay.
I'm just not satisfied with this. Let's bring it back a little more. Instead of doing the that loop there, we need to bring it back in. And then this comes in. I just need to lower this eraser a bit too. side. I may be able to just have it over the stem a little like this. Okay. They probably wouldn't be that long, so maybe we'll cut them down to here. back the extras. And that just looks wrong. I need to also be doing this on a new layer so I can make my mistakes without fear. I can merge the ribbon and the bow down together though. also help if I figured out what kind of flowers would be in this bouquet. I don't know if I want to put baby's breath in. Baby's breath is such a common bouquet filler. For those of you who don't know, baby's breath is like the small white stuff where it's just like little buds like this and then the stems that you see in a lot of bouquets. stems kind of in different angles. Because while they are bundled together, it's not perfectly straight. Some of them are going in between the others. So there, I think that looks much more realistic. And then we'll cut them off there, I think. Let me come in here and do some work on the ends. Boy, this is a robust bouquet of flowers, but I guess that's fine. Let me also erase back where the ribbon's going to be covering them. I 
like this bouquet cost someone a good chunk of money. They are not cheap. Bouquets are not cheap, especially for events. Like, if they know you're doing an event, the price automatically jacks up. You know, dying is not a cheap affair for humans at all. What kind of flowers do I want? I gotta decide that. Hmm. So I guess it depends on what culture you grew up in. But um, some cultures, they have very particular meanings for flowers. Uh, so there's certain kinds you would get and certain kinds that you would not touch at all. But in the society that Ham grew up in, pretty much any flower could be a funerary flower. Uh, white is a common color. Uh, roses, just basically anything the person liked even. I remember there were a couple that had like daffodils and those are typically a very vibrant flower. So it depends on the person really and the family and the budget of course. So I gotta think this through. <laughs> what kind of, for me, what kind of effort am I willing to put into this bunch of flowers? You know, let's do lilies. Lilies are easy to draw. At least for me. And since white is typically the color, I think it'll work out well. So maybe we'll do some lilies, some roses, and maybe some baby's breath, just because they they always seem to be in everything. But I still got to think about the angle of the flower here, because they're going to be facing away from us. Am I? I need to be on a separate layer. Let me get a general shape, but down. I think we'll have stems come out about here. And then we'll have the arrangement. Kind of floofy, but squashed where it's touching the ground. And of course, let me line that up better with the I need to try to tilt these. Okay. So let me come back down here to the stem part. And we'll just get in our, our random lines for the stems. I think there's fine. And let's come up here for the flowers. are typically kind of shaped like this. Where they've got the curve out going.
And then they've got the long stamen. And I am going to be super lazy and cheap about it because I want to. It's going to be the one lily that's going to be everywhere. Let's do the rose. Typically they're very tight. They're not like full bloom roses. And the angle we're going to be seeing them at is very profiled. So they're kind of bell shaped. And they're like that. And this will be our rose. For the whole piece. All right, let's get to messing around. Let's see. Typically, the lilies are going to be kind of the bulk of it because roses tend to be a little expensive. So let's kind of fill out where these are going to be. Kind of give them some different sizes. And the lilies need to be bigger than the rose. And down here, I'm gonna erase this back. I think we'll put another rose back here just because it fits that lily's curve pretty nicely. I need to... What time we got? Okay, yeah, we still got time. I have flies when I'm doing art, so I always gotta constantly check. That's, um... Baby's breath. I know, like, in this part... Here too. that here and erase away some of this and then get some just some leaves some nice filler leaves
Well, I think that's what we'll have along here. Just some nice flat leaves up against the ground here. All right, let me turn off this here. And I think that's a perfectly fine. Okay. Uh, let me shrink down all of these. And I am going to do... Some random leaves here in the, the part where they meet the stem. Okay, now all of it I need to angle a bit better. Let me get it to the size I want. Put it about here. And then I'll do a distort. I think more like this. That's fine. I am willing to accept it. I'm going to move on now. Let me come back here and raise some more of the stone. Here we go. Okay, let's get in the wall. Part. I need to redo that. I'll leave. I'll leave this line for now because she's going to be kind of translucent. We may be seeing seeing some of that behind her. I need to redo that. That shape was rough. Okay, and let's get in these couple headstones here that actually have a defined shape. We've got this one here. Let's try to get it at the same angle as the one we have. Yeah. 
need to make note of them here for when she becomes translucent. defined was just the obelisk which some people still get by the way it's not just the a really old type of monument people still get obelisk sometimes And if we're in the same angle, then we need to be seeing this kind of sliver. And this needs to be angled down this way. others are just kind of like vague squares and bushes. That's it. Let me turn up our sketch layer. Oh, the uh, <laughs> the airplane. I forgot the airplane. But that's pretty much it. Here. It may not be seeing this, so I'm not going to work on it too hard. We'll see how translucent she becomes in that area. Neum. Let's see. That's right, paper airplane. like me to work forever on these hands just to erase most of it away. I would do that, wouldn't I? Okay, though, I think we're finally done with the lines layer. Let me, um, before I horribly, irreversibly make this permanent, um, nope, not reference. Flip. Here we go. Okay, so I didn't do too bad. I actually think it's all fine. Okay, now we will horribly or reversibly merge these. Boop. 
always flip your art. Let's see here. Now I need to get over to the appropriate color palette. Gonna add this black there. And then let's start with the central part of the piece, which is gonna be our skeleton lady. Let's be under. We're gonna change the line layer to multiply so we can see underneath it whenever we're coloring. And then let's uh just get into it. I need to lower that. I had that way too big. Okay, I think that's better. We're just going to start coloring. Come in here and give her a fill. Let me get my eraser. Turn it all the way down. Turn the size up. I think a better way to do this, we'll make this first one the lightest her transparency is going to be, which is still pretty dark. So 85, and then let's paint instead of erasing. We'll paint over where the darker places are going to be. And it's darker in the center pieces and lighter at the edges. I think about here. Oops. Make sure these are all connected. this a little darker. Okay, and we'll come back and adjust this later too. Get a nice bone color. circles get turned into ovals when they're in perspective. 
But I think I'm just gonna copy this over. Oops, nope, just move it, please. Fill in these little gaps here. This also cause a problem when we color it. sketch layer. I need to make sure that's above everything at all times. I'm also going to turn it down. About there. Let's get the clavicles in. I think I'm just going to do a copy paste on this. And then a shrink. again. I need to make sure I'm actually on the stable one. I need to fix this edge a little bit. There we go. This is also incredibly pointy. Make sure that's closed off. I'm gonna turn off this sketch layer too. I could just focus on the shape of this. I need to fix the erased bit here a bit.
And I just zoned out. I was pain. I haven't been talking at all. I'm not a very entertaining person, am I? Sorry about that. Must be very boring to sit in on one of my streams. Especially when I'm getting into the zone like this. I'm just going through painting in some nice colorful patterns. I think I need this to be a little more vibrant. Let's come in here and adjust it. I think more like this. Eh, a little more saturated. We don't want it blending in with the skelly color. this layer underneath. Yeah, there we go. do this. Just to make sure everything's symmetrical. We're going to come over here and clear these and then I will copy flip the mask later. back to that in a moment.
foolish dreams are a nice way to kick back and relax. It's almost a Samara in a way. A good way. But thank you. I'm glad it's relaxing. I was doing it again where I wasn't talking for a long time. Oh, let me get nice and hydrated for you. And you did it this time! <laughs> okay, hold on. You remembered! Let's get the stretch in. Ugh. Ooh, that was nice. Goodness, we're out of time. Let me try to get this one thing in, and then we can fight off for the day. Fun fact about the human skeleton. There's over 200 bones, but more than half the bones are in the hands and feet. Let me do this on a different layer. Skilly facts for skilly people. Okay, we'll do one there. Let me get color again. One there. And then the blue. One there. I'm going to merge these. And the pattern is just going to repeat across. Okay, we're gonna come back and erase the parts we don't need. think how am I gonna do this? I don't think there was an easy way around that. I think I'm gonna have to go in. And we'll just do it again. And let's mix it up. Let's put blue here.
and then we come in here and I think it'll be a pink one. The last one here. Okay, and then real quick, I'm gonna merge these down. I'll do a duplicate. and pull get things where we need them to go I think I'm just gonna have to redo the center part I'll get it to fit around the eye and the nose. Like such. We'll do this. Okay, and this will work because this is behind the nose, so we can infer it's also coming down over there. And then maybe back up and down. I actually think we'll just make this all that color. That doesn't quite look right to me. I think we need this to be broader. I still want the center to be here. Okay, and then let get a big center piece. we got time for. I gotta stop or I'm gonna be here all day. Pause this. Succumb to the need. <laughs> yeah, I'm not, I'm not prepared. I've got other things I need to do today. I can't just be doing more art all the time. Well, I mean, I'm going to be doing more art, but it's going to be animation stuff for all the fancy stuff I'm working on. Let's get that away. Get me nice and centered. So I can see your faces. Oh, one last care for you, of course. There we go. And we'll do a stretch. Maybe in the future we can program the mister and the solar lamp to be a little smaller so it'll fit. Okay, here we go. All right, so that's it for today. I want to thank everyone for coming by, hanging out with me as usual. You guys are great. And I really appreciate you. I really do. 
but uh, that's all for today. Uh, tomorrow we will be back with some cozy grove and some little wood. But uh, as usual, you know, thank you for always being here. And thank you, Jixoy. I hope you have a wonderful day. So without further ado, until next time, have fun space, friends. <laughs>